And we are back, folks, for another edition of the Michigan Recruiting Insider. This is the post Jaden Davis commitment, the start of it. We said that it could be a domino effect. It could be a snowball effect. That with that, the momentum that Michigan had heading into that announcement could really pick up a ton of steam. And we feel like we're seeing the signs of that now as we get into this latest episode of the Michigan Recruiting Insider. Of course, if you like this podcast, be sure to rate it, be sure to review it, be sure to tell all your friends about it. They can find it wherever they get their podcasts. That's Google, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, you name it. Of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get a notification anytime we do a new episode or we have new content, and you'll keep helping the channel grow. And then, of course, where it all goes down the michiganinsider.com football basketball recruiting team coverage you name it number one in the land when it comes to accuracy and info you can trust the michiganinsider.com and after you get through your trial period and become a full paying member you also get access to paramount plus i call it great bang for your buck with that Joining me as they do every single week, the best crew in the land, starting off with, look at this, two weeks in a row, we can actually see Steve Lorenz. Steve, how you doing, man? Yeah, all right, yeah. All right, good, uh, great. Tiger shooting just poorly enough for me to be okay Watch it, walking away from the Masters for a few hours, and uh, I can put that down for a little bit, but uh, everything's good. Yeah, I mean, hey, look, if you ever look at the comments, it's like celebration time that people can see. They have been wanting to see Steve. Just don't Lorenz. get it. I'll, like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> does, the info, does the info sound better? I, I got. I guess I, you know. So that's ah, good. Whatever. I'm here now. See you, Steve. They feel closer to you. Yeah, yeah. All Just right. what I want. And then, of course, the guy you see all the time, and his background has changed. Bryce Marriage. Bryce, how you doing? Solid, solid. I, yeah, I didn't mix it up. You know, go a little more corporate. Keep it. Nice and solid, but no, it's good to see Steve. You know, I know he's got his food take there with in and out shirt. I don't, I'm not a in and out oh. fan personally, but that's, you know. Yeah, all right. It's from cool. your Cali days, uh, Steve. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Order a couple of t-shirts. I got some Waffle House gara gear somewhere in the house here too. I'll put on every once in a while. So got Wait, my food, got my food shirts. Wait, what's your order? At where? in and out Double, double animal style. No lettuce or tomato. Easy. No. Easy. Yeah, so we went to last Easy. time we went to Ve- last time we went to Vegas. I walked to the In and Out and back. Like that's how much I wanted. It was like didn't want to pay for an Uber and it was nice out. Obviously, I walked all the way there and back. So hey, we don't get it. You don't get it over here. So when when you're out west, at all, you know, you got to take all. advantage. I feel like so. No doubt. Well, hey, if you're Michigan, you got to take advantage of this momentum, man. You get your quarterback in the fold. Let's see if you can double up. We were hearing. When when we were down in Charlotte last week, I was here, man. Things are really trending up. When Andrew Sprague, I dropped a – we've all since dropped crystal balls, but I dropped a crystal ball right then and there sometime last week. And lo and behold, fellas, today, Andrew Sprague, the four-star offensive lineman out of Kansas City, Missouri, is officially in the recruiting class. Again, we talked about momentum, Bryce Marich. This is, I think, the first sign of that momentum coming off of the Jaden Davis commitment. Yeah, I mean, I I think a big thing here, too, is Michigan quietly for several years has done really good in Missouri. I mean, if you look back over the years, they've gotten Haskins, they've gotten Ronnie Bell. Um, More recently, they've gotten Fred Moore, who had a great, you know, spring game. He's been having a great spring. Bo of Sprague, six foot eight. 290 pounds, your prototypical left tackle. I think he's going to be your LT1. Michigan's been on him for months. I mean, I, I want to even Longer say a year. Four, you remember Maybe I, a year. On your road trip last year, I said, you know, yeah. Drop yeah. So, Craig and we just weren't able to do it. Right. And he's been a guy that – Sharon Moore's done a great job. I know uh, it's not just been him and the recruiting efforts, the whole class. He was up here this past weekend for the spring game, and – he was with all the commits, Ben Roebuck, Ted Hammond, Jordan Marshall, all those guys were in a group. I mean, they were attached to his hip, essentially, the whole the whole game. I mean, they sat in the stands together. I took a picture of that. So this is a guy, though, I think is going to fit what Michigan wants, a big, long, lengthy tackle that can move. He used to play high school basketball. He was a standout there. And the thing with him, 
is man, he just fits what Michigan loves to do up front. He finishes blocks. He's got a nasty streak. And you can't teach his length. On top of that, he's got a great frame. Right now, he's 290. But you easily, if you look at him, could probably put on 30 pounds. He's a six foot eight, 320 pounder. Michigan hasn't, I mean, this upcoming season, you might see some smaller tackles. But in terms of this type of tackle, he's got the NFL prototypical size. And I, I love the pairing with him. And then last cycle with Evan Link, I think the two of them back to back. That's that's top tier. Those are two pillars you can have up front and really work with going forward. Yeah, and I like the uh, you know I like it as a, as a segue because I, going to watch Evan Link, the thing that stood out to me with him, Steve, is he was a guy who clearly is just now filling out. These are these are guys who you could see were building up from two forty, two fifty, two sixty, and you could see very easily uh, it by their sophomore years, they're, they're 310 and looking like they're 280, 290. And it, you love the coordination that you see. Like you watch um, Andrew Sprague on film and you see a guy 6'8", as coordinated as he is and still looking like he has room to fill out on top of it. A, a high upside guy that's already really good right now. And I would say even a little farther ahead of, of where Evan Link was at the same stage of development. Yeah, I don't think Sprague is done moving up. I th- he feels like a kid, you know, Kansas City, decently scouted area, but I, I, he feels like a kid that will excel in the camp settings where the ranking where the rankings can change. Um, yeah, physically oozing potential, you know, and and yeah, I think you know we've you see it more and more every year in the NFL draft uh, offensive line is a spot where, yeah, I think colleges teams are like really looking, looking for guys who aren't maxed out yet. The guys that are still in the midst of like getting to where they can be, not guys who are already there, you know, not to say some of those guys who aren't already there don't succeed, but more and more you're seeing, it's really more about catching a guy on the upswing and, uh, and Link and, and Sprague both seem to be in that boat. Uh, yeah, I don't care how much Sprague weighs right now. He could he could definitely weigh more than what he does. I mean, he's just he's built differently. Uh, he's like a more filled out Tristan Bounds at this at this stage in his career, right? I mean, Bounds was a guy we knew was going to take a while if he's going to get there. Sprague a little further along for sure, but just a similar that six eight uh, frame. Uh, just yeah, oozes potential at the left tackle spot. He's been their number one left tackle uh, target for yeah well over a calendar year at this point. Uh, I think. I feel like he visited really early on in the process. And I think it, it I'd almost argue looking back, it, Michigan may have led the entire time. Right. Uh, right. Who else is really uh, the, the one thing about his recruitment? I remember is, uh, you know, I wondered what would happen when Notre Dame offered uh, because, you know, Harry Highstand left for the NFL. And I thought Notre Dame made a really smart move was to offer him immediately after they got their new, offensive line coach to say hey it was just the last assistant yeah he wasn't that high on you but we we've really loved you the whole time um you know to see maybe if that would move the needle but this was a classic case to me of who else who was really the other you know maybe Oklahoma a little bit I know the USC offer resonated a bit I think he had originally planned on going up there for a visit but this kind of quietly felt like one that Michigan was ahead uh, almost the whole way. So, you know, whether Jaden Davis commit, I mean, it's obviously the fact he's doing this right after right. Jaden Davis, may, maybe it makes it more comfortable to do it, but this does kind of feel like a race Michigan may have won either sure. way. Uh, but right. But, but still, uh, you know, from perception standpoint, it looks better <laughs> to see these guys Man. lining up and just committing like this. So yeah, I don't think there's any question that you're, you're going to see uh momentum, kind of build and whether it's the momentum from uh the position kind of squeezing guys which we can get into or the momentum of them seeing man the quarterback is in the fold this is you you you, we talked so much about the obstacles before one of the obstacles was you know they're always talking about coaches especially jim harbaugh being mentioned by the nfl then we're hearing the obstacle being nil when you see a five-star quarterback kind of jumping in the other recruits but in the aftermath of the five-star quarterback jumping in I mean, the obstacles just don't seem so big. But back to you, one of your other points, Steve, talking about they may have led the whole way. It was kind of the same way with Evan Link. I mean, these two dudes 
were very similar in how they handled their recruitments too. Very quiet. Didn't do a whole lot of interviews. You almost, and you had to go see them to talk to them to kind of figure out what was going on. So you, there was really no, no firm understanding about just how much of a lead Michigan may have had all along. Right. So you got to credit Sharon Moore again for one of the, you know, a couple of the more quiet recruitments to steal your phrase, Steve. Uh, I, I think that probably kind of bled over into at least some of the dealings with coaches. And it says something to me that he was able to be in consistently with both of those guys to the point where with Evan Link, who did you have? You had Penn State in there, um, Tennessee, uh, Miami. You had some big timers that he beat out there and then even more big timers that he wound up beating uh, beating out for Andrew Sprague. So more just great recruiting prowess from Sharon Moore, that kind of takes you into some of the more loquacious recruits who tell you a lot about what they're like and what they're doing and where they're leaning. And Blake Frazier, guys, and listen, I, I said this on the last episode. You know, Blake Frazier on his visit, and this is one, this is definitely one that Jaden Davis was talking about. He said, you know, big smile on his face, all those guys feeling really good about where we stand with all of those guys. He's a legacy on top of it. And the word I got coming out of that visit was that, hey, you know, mom, dad say, listen, you got to do your due diligence. You need to, you know, make sure that you look around and give all these schools a, a really, really strong look. Right? That's from other people who were on the visit. And what I would say, Steve, is if you look at his, at his social media habits, it certainly seems to suggest that those people who were saying, oh, man, he was really feeling Michigan a lot to the point where, you know, he had to be encouraged to kind of slow down a bit. Seems like from his social media takes that that was probably right. Now, you got to wonder with Sprague now in the fold, does the, the class kind of the space kind of shrinking a bit kind of speed a guy like that up or some of the other guys that we're going to be talking about here? Right, yeah, you know what do we say sometimes? Ju only, only at Michigan uh, would the father, or like maybe say it's his parents, his dad actually played at Michigan, telling his son, who's clearly leaning towards Michigan, to slow down his recruitment. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. I always crack up at that. I mean, I, I mean, if I was in the position, I'd be doing my due diligence too. But it, yeah, the, the Frazier is another one that has felt like it's heavily leaning Michigan for a while. Um, I feel like he's a guy who's going to have a spot whether he committed now or down the road. But, yeah, I think the bigger impact on, on, on a, a closing opportunity will be with some other guys. You know, with Frazier, I think we say, what, Clemson, I think, is a school that's kind of consistently been there with him. You know, when he released his top five, that was, again, to me it was like, okay, I know Clemson's going to be in there. Who are the three other schools even really going to be? And I think it was, I think, Florida, LSU, and I don't remember, I don't even remember who the fifth school was. So, you know, Frazier – Tons of value. Another guy underranked, in my opinion. We only have him in 88 still. I, I don't know um, if he's been reevaluated anytime recently or not, but he's not an 88. Um, again, that doesn't mean I think he's like a five star. Pro you know, I'm not touting Michigan commits to move up to five star status or anything. Just do not think he's an 88 at all. Um, but major value uh, that that a guy who could really end up. He's a guy who could end up anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's capable of playing center, depending on how. Michigan decides they want to finish out this class, right? So, you know, tons of value it, with with Frazier's potential addition to the class. But, yeah, then it leaks over into, I mean, geez, a growing list of, of potential options, right? It's crazy. This is kind of like you expect good things coming off of two straight Joe Moore awards and, 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 the, and Michigan's identity, how they like to run the football. They like to play physical up front. But, man, I mean, it's like I know we've when we've been discussing, it's kind of hard almost keeping track of, like, the different possibilities up front that they could finish this with. So, yeah, man, you wonder how many they're going to take. <laughs> that because That's, yeah. Is, I mean, those are good. Just call good problems, right? Yes. How many of these time. guys you're going to take? Because Max Anderson, who has a crystal ball in for Max Anderson? One of you guys, right? I do. All right, I you have got one another in. old yeah. crystal ball in too, don't you, Steve? Wait, no. I was, I was thinking, I. I was close on uh, Guarnera, the center out of Florida. Almost, I mentioned. I think I wrote that I was close. Probably still going to hold off. Like that's what I mean, though. 
that's what we talk about. I know we're going to mention Bennett Warren and some other guys. It's like, it's like, okay, well not now what, you know, it's like, I, like I hear he, but like, he tells Bryce that Michigan's leading. It's like, what? Like, you know, they can't take like eight guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> the guy we haven't talked about in a minute, but he was one of the first names out of Jaden Davis's mouth because it's his childhood friend. And he visited Michigan uh, earlier this year is Walt Claire Flint. Yeah. Right? And so, I mean, <laughs> it's <That's> so, <laughs> so many guys, you know, it said they can't take every guy. And then you you wonder if you're gonna if you're gonna have a surplus at a position, how much of a surplus can you have in your recruiting class before it starts affecting the guys that are on your roster, right? So you gotta I think they it's an interesting juggling act for them as they as they play this out. Cause could could they take seven offensive linemen? I mean, they could probably from a class size perspective, they probably could. Right. But is that is it does that work well for your room? So I, I think you're probably in the five to six range in this, in this class. I don't know what you think about it, Bryce, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, I think it'll be first come first serve uh, with, with maybe as Steve said, you, you hold a spot for your legacy guy. But other than that, I think it's, I do think it's first come first serve. I do too. And I, you know, I, the other thing that's interesting about this time about numbers, I didn't think about this until you brought this up, Sam, is they also brought in two transfers. Now, I don't know Nugent's status in terms of how many years he's got. Miles, I'm pretty sure he's got at least two. Yep. So, yep. you know, I mean, let's just say, and we're just hypotheticals, we're talking. You're probably going to obviously lose Zenner. You're probably going to lose Keegan. No doubt. I think Barnhart is done after this year in this final year too i'm not sure about jones so another year i think but you're losing a good majority of your offensive line now here's the thing and people joked i think jake buddy even said on the broadcast for the spring game is your backup offensive line probably could start for half the big 10 and probably be pretty good like geo raheem Great in the game. I, I mean, I it, from uh, from the field level, both those guys, uh, Amir Herring looked very good from the field level for me. I mean, I you know I was watching. I'm not like some offensive line expert, but I mean, he looked pretty good. You know, and then you got you got guys still coming in. You know, Nathan Afobi, who I think is going to be very solid in years to come. So right, that Tr- Trente, uh, Trente is. I guess time flies, fellas. Time flies. I guess I didn't. 19 class, that. isn't he? They got here in the 19th. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. This is his fifth year. So, yeah, I mean. Wow. I mean, so you you need to take a lot. But here's the other problem, too. Michigan has to ask themselves. All right. Let's say, we, let's just say hypothetical, you do take seven. Most likely that means you're taking away numbers from some other position. Mm-hmm. Who's maybe Come safety? On. Maybe safety? You know, but I mean, well, you, you get Hillman late too. That right. gives them a little bit of flexibility defensive back wise, most likely. I mean, he's probably on defense, but. But it's like you're looking at some of the guys that Jay is recruiting. I don't think he's slowing down in terms of safety recruiting. So, I, and, and he's on some talented guys, you know. So I just, that that's my biggest question. Okay. Let's say you do decide to take all seven and things change. I mean, let's say Ben and Warren, he just took a visit, right? Loved it. He told me Michigan was the leader, but he still had that post visit low, Sam. And sometimes it wears off. And now here's the caveat to that he set up an official visit already to Michigan. Now he also has two others to Oklahoma and Oregon. And I know Texas AM is obviously in the mix as well. He's down there right by the uh, school. So there's just a lot of moving parts, but it's a very good problem. This is a good problem Michigan should have. And this is one that you went back to back to more awards. You kind of expect things should be going this direction as well. Yeah, man. And then we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about, uh, you may have mentioned it already, Steve, you got the number one tackle in the country coming in for a visit this week in Brandon Baker. And uh, this dude has been lights out for some time now, but he's, you talk about a guy who, who has yet to fill out and, He's what 285 right now. He's gonna be he's gonna be 300, 305. He's already a beast. Just getting him on campus is a big deal. Sharon putting in some work uh, with this as well. You wonder if can you pull him away from SC? Um, 
Mm. You know, you, you, he, he's ah, at modern day, right? He's at modern day. <laughs> he's at modern day. So, you know, uh, right. you get him on campus, you got a shot. And they're, and they're getting him on campus on an unofficial on top of it. So that says something, too. Yep. I think, uh, yeah, SC, Oregon's a school I know he's been really high on. I think what's interesting about this one, I, Bryce, I, you talked to DeAndre Carter, right, his teammate after he visited. Mm-hmm. Always, Michigan felt like their better chance with those two guys because DeAndre Carter, I believe, is a top 100, like modern day California He's, offensive lineman, right? Yeah. Really, really good player. Uh, the thought was that Michigan would have a better chance with Brandon Baker. So it's going to be really interesting to see how <laughs> Michigan stands coming out of that visit because, again, that's a guy, if you're in it at all, then I think you'd. If you're thinking got a six or seven, you might start right. thinking about seven. I think, you know, sort of along the lines of what you guys were talking about, about juggling and stuff, I think the other juggling act Michigan's kind of got to think about is, is uh, you know, the desire or the, the, uh, the opportunity to strike while the iron's hot, right? Like, you know, two straight playoff appearances, does Michigan load this class up, you know, because – they might not be, you know, they're recruiting at a totally different, not a totally different level, but they're recruiting at a higher level than what we've seen them definitely compared to last year coming off the first Big Ten title. You know, do you, how do you have, like, you know, you know you, like, again, it's like, you, can we sign like 38 guys? You know, it's like, obviously, you know, that never, never going to happen, but there are positions and spots where, yeah, do you kind of take advantage and then between the portal and next cycle, just really be picky about, taking anybody uh, because you're going to get a decent amount of guys that you like. But, you know, again, once we get to five, six guys may be interested, but then you also get to the point where kids don't want to be part of a seven man offensive line class, no matter how talented they are. You know, it's like, do I want to be part of a seven man class at Michigan or a four man class at SC, you know? So, um, right. So there's a lot of little things in there, but with Brandon Baker specifically, I think, yeah, Michigan will host, they'll, pull out the red carpet and they'll see where they stand there. And uh, you know, if they're even remotely, if they're top three or four there, I think they're going to keep recruiting him. So yeah, you're ahead of the game. If you're able to get some traction in that recruitment, you got a lot to sell. I mean, you know, offensive line, there is no better program in the country right now. You can legitimately say that Michigan and Sharon Moore is one of the hottest coaches uh, in the, in the game. He's an outstanding recruiter on top of it. We'll see how things go. I'll be interested to hear, and you will obviously hear on the MichiganInsider.com uh, what Brandon Baker is saying coming out of that visit. But let's let's transition uh, because a lot of people are wondering what's happening with 25 quarterback recruiting on the heels of Jaden Davis uh, announcing his commitment to Michigan, the commitment that he first made in November, wanted to announce in December. The coaching uncertainty led him to delay it until March. All right. Uh, in that time, new quarterback coaches come in and Kirk Campbell, Bryce, and every single guy that comes to campus is saying the same thing. They absolutely love the dude. So, of course, we talked a lot about Bryce Underwood loving him, right? But he's not the only 25 quarterback, and he is the one 25 quarterback, though, who it was very clear that getting a 24 highly ranked guy was going to impact. And so maybe Michigan's chances – might be a little better with the other 25 quarterbacks moving forward. It's not to say you stop with, with Bryce. He's the number one quarterback in, in 25, but Michigan is also on the number two and number three quarterbacks in 25 as well, and both made their way to campus recently. Yeah, and I just want to piggyback off that. I think, you know, with the Jane Davis recruitment, Kirk kind of entered that one in later. I mean, obviously he was a – you know, analyst at the time, but that wasn't his, he didn't have his fingerprints over that recruitment. You can see kind of his game plan going forward in terms of quarterback recruiting. He's not putting his eggs in one basket. You know, he's kind of laying them out there, but he's shooting for the stars. And you mentioned two guys, Cutter Bowling, George McIntyre, uh, 24-7 sports composite number two and three ranked quarterbacks, along with obviously Bryce Underwood, the number one quarterback. So the one, two, and three quarterbacks they're all visited and less than a week span the spring George McIntyre was up for the spring game he loved his time really connected him and his family with Kirk Campbell 
And then obviously Cutter Bowley, I think that's a recruitment Michigan fans should be more closely watching. He's been up four times, you know, so he's seen a lot. I know he's a huge, huge fan of Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh is personally recruiting him as well. I know that for a fact. Um, this is a guy that has a big arm. They really like everything he has to offer. Different type of um, skill set and body right now. I mean, he's 6'4", 200, I think, 5 pounds, where George is more like this lanky, thin kid at six foot five, um, 175 pounds. So he's got to fill out. But both guys are elite at the position. They're really talented, and they've been up to campus in the you know the common denominator with all these visits so far. Sam is Kirk Campbell, and he's been a home run hire. It seems like at least from the very get go. And the biggest question will be the J- Jaden Davis effect. Is this going to play a role? And so far, at least for the two latter guys I just talked about, in, in terms of not Bryce, but it doesn't seem like that's going to play a role when they're considering Michigan at least. Yeah, so as we talk about this, though, I, we made this point on maybe the last episode that I don't expect in any way, shape, or form for Michigan to let up on on Bryce Underwood. I mean, he's right down the street, right? Uh, his relationship with Kirk Campbell is off to a great start. And that theme is so consistent. I mean, it's too consistent to not be something that I think you're going to be able to count on moving forward. You don't. There's no warm-up period with Kirk Campbell. I mean, guys get here, and they like him immediately. So that is an asset. And you got to feel like on the strength of that relationship, maybe maybe down the line that, you know, five, six months from now, uh, if they were thinking about, ah, we really don't want to follow a 24 big-timer, maybe he thinks so highly of Kirk Campbell that he's, you know what, this is a, this is a different circumstance and it's up the road. Or to another point that we've made, Hey, maybe it never becomes a thing that he can move past, but he goes someplace else and realizes, I want to come back home. That's why you keep recruiting. You keep recruiting until the bell, even if it looks like uh, it won't ring for you. But another thing to kind of point out, and I this actually didn't come out in the interview uh, that will be up, if you haven't seen it already, over on the MichiganInsider.com, check it out. But the interview with uh, Jeremiah Davis, who – after a year of talking, he actually got on camera this time. He was really, really strong. So definitely don't miss it. One of the things he said off camera, though, he was asking about Bryce Underwood. He said, what's up with what's up with the with the Underwood kid? And I said, well, I just don't think now that Jaden's in the fold, I don't think that that is, you know, that, that is going to be a recruitment that continues to trend up the way that it had been. Like, they might still be in it. But it was looking like they were number one with a bullet. I don't know that that's going to be the case anymore. He said, "Well, I, I hope, I hope that's, I hope you're wrong about that. You know, we hope Michigan gets them. You know, we want them to get as many, as many good prospects, regardless of position, as possible, even at quarterback. Because I mean, you're going to have competition wherever you go, and so we hope he comes in and competes as well. And so this is a." That's why I say you you never know. It could be a situation where he helps you recruit Bryce Underwood down the line. I don't know how much impact it would have, but I I say that to say this is a this is the the kind of recruit that is going to help you in in ways in which maybe you don't even anticipate. And this might be one of them helping them recruit 25 quarterbacks. And maybe it won't work with, with Bryce Underwood. That's just who he mentioned specifically, Steve. But these other guys, I would don't be surprised if you see Jaden Davis helping recruit other quarterbacks too. You talk about a best case scenario. I mean, I think if you're a 25, like if you're in Underwood's camp and you have the the five star 24 quarterback recruiting on Michigan's behalf for, I mean, I I almost I got to think that's as big a plus as the coaches continuing to recruit a kid. I mean, because you would think. You know, in a normal situation, it'd be the total opposite. Right. And and that's not to say that kids shy away from competition or anything, but it's just, you know, everybody wants to see the field as, as soon as possible, you know, and, and you know, a, a talent like Bryce Underwood is a guy that is probably like much like Dante Moore last year, probably expecting to see the field almost immediately wherever he ends up, you know, so to have your right to have your 24 quarterback open to actively recruiting other elite quarterbacks is like you know, 
Jim Harbaugh has got to be like, uh, talk about a, that's a Harbaugh guy right there, right? I understand. I understand. It was unsolicited. This was sure. Jeremiah Davis asking, what's up? It's like, oh, and then saying, disappointed when I said, I don't think that Michigan's going to be as high with him. He's like, oh, man, that's unfortunate. Wait a minute. That, we hope that that changes. We hope that, you know, that's a kid that Michigan winds up landing. You're right. It is a best case scenario. Because here's the other thing I'm, I'm actually going to. I'm actually going to highlight Ohio State a little bit here, right? But you look at how they've recruited quarterbacks, big time, the last few years, right? They've they've stacked they've stacked quarterbacks recently, like they stack receivers. Difference being, you can play all those receivers, at least the majority of them. But hey, you might have a situation where you got Olave and Garrett Wilson and uh, you know Smith and Jigba and. Jamison Williams is like, well, wait a minute. I'm a five star too. And he and he just moves on. I mean, I think that that is kind of the approach that you have to take. You know, you you recruit as much firepower as you can. You let them compete. And then you understand, Bryce, that in the day and age of the transfer portal, that some of those guys are going to. I said this last year with Kate and, and JJ. JJ is such a Michigan team guy right and he was saying i'm in michigan for the long haul but i'm telling you my opinion on the matter is if he had lost that job last year i would not have been surprised to see jj mccarthy in the transfer portal just like we just looked up and we saw k mcnamara in the transfer portal. that's just how it goes these days you aren't gonna have two starting caliber quarterbacks riding it out for the entirety of their time if they're close close together so you know Knowing that, go recruit as much firepower as you can. Let them compete. And may the best man win, and the other one is going to go find another spot where he can win. That's just the nature of the beast these days. It's just college football in general. You know, with NIL and with the transfer portal, I mean, as much as you would love to stack and, you you know, back in the day, you would have guys at least three years to four. And then, you know, there is that they might transfer. But, I mean, now guys are in the transfer portal – before the even season starts, before even spring camp starts. So you can't worry about that. You got to look for the best of the best. Michigan's doing that approach. They have a wide net. I mean, obviously we named off those three, but there's other guys they're still looking at. Stone Saunders from Pennsylvania. He was the Pennsylvania Gatorade Player of the Year. He threw for 54 touchdowns. He's a guy that I know he's been up to campus several times that Michigan likes. Uh, Kelden Ryan from yeah, Texas. Have, by the way, Gene, so, Hankerson, Gene Hankerson, one of our correspondents, going to be over at Bishop McDevitt checking him out. So there you go. That, that's yeah. one. I, I apologize for not mentioning Stone Saunders. Yeah, man, he made his way to campus too. Uh, Bryce, what do you remember about what Stone had to say? He I, make a guess what he said. <laughs> Same for example, right? Exactly. So I, I just, I really like their approach to cycle. And I think the biggest thing, too, and most encouraging after hearing you talk about it, is Jane Davis is open to any guy coming in. He's not going to almost negative recruit Michigan and say, ah, I don't really want another five-star following me. Why don't you guys find a project quarterback? So I'm like, no, 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 no. He wants the best of the best following him because he's trying to make this team as good as it's going to get. You know, and the other thing, too, is we saw this one play. That's all it takes. Guy gets hurt. And that's that's your message to someone like that. You don't want to come in playing. Well, if he gets hurt, he's down. And you already mentioned Ohio State. They won a national title with their third string quarterback. They sure so. did. They sure did. And their their backup quarterback a few years later went to LSU and won a, <laughs> won yeah. a national championship, right? I mean, that's how they've been doing it. And that's not that's that's just how I think you that's the most likely path to success in my opinion there's too much riding on on a guy if you just have one i mean look at look at how this is a different um dynamic i mean wisconsin is not ohio state wisconsin is not michigan but graham mertz was the best quarterback recruit in the history of the program they put everything on him they changed their offensive philosophy because of him and their coach got fired because of him, too. I'm not not to disparage the kid, but he put so much on that one guy. And when that one guy didn't work, it blew up the program. 
quarterback is too crucial a position to just have one, to just have one big timer. You got to have, I mean, look, quiet is kept. Michigan, a very precarious situation this, this year, fellas. Very precarious situation this year. Absolutely. Uh, J.J. McCarthy, I mean, man, I, I, they need to put some kind of, some kind of, you know, cloak. I don't know, you know, some kind of special fabric on his jersey and some bubble kind wrap. Of, I mean, yeah, you know, ball kind of bubble wrap around of a force field, something to keep this man healthy. Because if he, if something happens, guys, uh, they are in more trouble than most teams right now because, or or a lot of teams, I should say, most teams than a lot of teams. Uh, because the the backup scenario is far from being determined, very clearly. Yeah, no, Wisconsin's running the air raid now. <laughs> like that's how that's how big that's how much things have changed uh, due to that quarterback situation. But but yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a lot like you know playing cards where you want to be holding the you have a better chance to win when you hold the best hand you can possibly have. You you have a better chance to win. That's what, like you, you said, what Ohio State's done at receiver. Uh, geez, I even forgot about Jamison Williams. That's how good they've recruited at receiver. You know, I mean, yeah, it's like they just got a five-star. They just got Mylon Graham out of Indiana the other day, and it's like uh, people on our board are like, you know, ho-humming because, well, Michigan will out-tough them, and it's like, man, but there's no way that that position is going to be – is not going to be a huge plus for them no for way. the foreseeable future, right? That's why they recruit that way. Like it's, there's no downside to it. So, uh, so yeah, if you're Michigan, you know, yeah, you gotta, you gotta put all your chips in ever in all these big time baskets. Uh, there's really no downside to doing that. Uh, that's where, if you're a good eval, if you're good at evaluating, that's where that can come into play. If those top, top guys don't happen to come to fruition or work out. So yeah, I agree. Yeah, about the yeah, the quarterback situation in general. Yeah, JJ, they need to like uh, dip him in gold or something, like something that won't break, you know, or try to get out to such a try to push it to get out to a big lead enough where he's only got to play half a game for the first six weeks of the season or something. So, yeah. uh, you know, there's just a yeah, there's obviously a ton riding on him there. So, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, no reason not to be going all out for the best guys in the country. And like I said before, having your your prize quarterback in, in the 24 class uh, advocating. Or him in his camp advocating to pick up more top guys at this at the same position. I mean, you can't ask for any more than that. You sure can. And just to emphasize the point that you just made, Steve, in passing, but let's highlight they should be running up the score as often as they can. I mean, if if you can get your starters and especially JJ play one series in the third quarter and be done, man, they need to be trying to do that in a big way uh, because. And not just to work the backups to get them some some experience, which is a, a big deal, but just to lower the injury risk. The less he plays, less chance there is he's injured, at least to me, right? So uh, hopefully that's something they can do. And looking at the schedule, they should be in position to be blowing some of these teams out early in the third quarter. So we can, we can hope that that works out that way. Let's move over, guys, to linebacker recruiting. We spent a lot of time on it because Michigan appears to be no, – not they are trending up in a big way with two of the top linebacker prospects in the country. One of them, Aaron Childs, we spent multiple episodes on. And uh, I think I mentioned this in the last episode. If I didn't, let me, uh, let me do so now. Michigan will get his last visit. We already know that – you know, dad pumped the brakes on him committing on his visit. He said that. I played that on the episode, right? So dad, he was ready to commit. Dad said, no, nah, let's relax. Let's relax. Let's go see some other schools. And he said, but hey, we got our official visits lined up and Michigan is going to be last up. That's not a coincidence, fellas. They're going to get a chance to respond to, refute, top, overcome anything anyone else says. And I think that all these other squads are going to have a tough time. He's a big-time academic kid. He's a big-time uh, relationship kid. As Chris Partridge has done a really, really good job there, Steve. He was already recruiting him at Ole Miss. Jim Harbaugh stepping in with the, with the nice touch with the family, really connecting there, talking about Team Childs. That really resonated. Uh, you got some other connections, the DMV connections on the roster. That's a big deal. Uh, you got Pam Fish, Coach Pam. Uh, who is obviously connected to Nick Harbor, but this is another one of her track students. 
She's working it as well. Just a lot of feathers in the cap with this one. I have a hard time seeing Michigan being beaten, Steve. But then you throw in Jeremiah Beasley, who you just threw in a crystal ball for. So we need to hear. We need to hear what you think about the Beasley recruitment, Steve, because that's a big one, too. So, yeah, with Childs, yeah, I mean, I think he's up there with the, the Blake Frazier type situation where, yeah, it'd be a very, very big surprise if he did not uh, verbally commit to Michigan, uh, whenever that may be. But just Michigan's the heavy, heavy favorite there. Uh, I think we've said a couple times before the big question there. He did have a good relationship with George Hilo. Uh, so as long as Chris Partridge kind of kept that momentum going, that Michigan was going to be fine. Uh, the difference with Beasley is Partridge, I think, has – sort of been the one who's totally built that, not quite from the ground up, but kind of. Uh, that recruitment has changed a lot uh, for the in the positive way for Michigan since he was brought on board. He was back again for the spring game on April 1st, which I think, am, you guys, is that his third? That's his third visit. Of visit since Partridge has been hired, correct? Yep. So there's a, you know, a great relationship building there. Uh, you know, I think what, Penn State, Tennessee, Probably the other two programs that were are most involved, Kentucky still around, Michigan State, kinda. Um, you know, my thought, I, I I believe Michigan feels very good about where they stand in that one. He set a commitment date for the end of June. I think it's June 29th. Uh, don't know if that means he's gonna be taking. I I gotta think that means he's gonna take some official visits. I don't know if he's announced any of those or not, but late June says at least what, three official visits probably. Uh, but either way, it kind of feels like Michigan feels really, really good about Childs. I think they feel really good. Not really, really good. They feel really good about Beasley. And then the bigger, the big question will be, you know, I think they want to take one more guy there, what, who that third guy will be. There are quite a few options sort of in the, in the wings, but none that I would argue right now, if you go to our target board, uh, none that I argue right now that they're in like super, super great position with. So, uh, you know, one guy to keep an eye on, and Bryce, I think you've talked to him, is uh, the Florida commit, uh, Miles Graham, right? The kid out of Atlanta that committed. I know he's Ernest Graham's kid, uh, which is probably why he's committed to Florida right now. But Florida, you know, going to be – actually, actually, to tie it in, Graham Mertz is probably going to be Florida's starting quarterback this year, actually. So – you're talking about, uh, you know, I think Florida could have could be, you know, easily in for a long season. I do not believe they're being picked in the top half of the SEC East, um, you know, and, and they didn't have a great year last year. You know, there might be a lot of pressure on Billy Napier if they don't have a better season this year. Uh, so Graham's one who really stands out as a guy that may be continued, like a guy that Michigan will, will continue to recruit for the long haul uh, because they believe his ceiling is that high. And then also Daniel Hill out of Mississippi is a four-star that Partridge offered after he took the job. Um, uh, obviously our, our Mississippi caveat that Jeremy Lesueur is the only player in program history to come from the state of Mississippi. But, you know, I think Hill's another guy that Michigan is going to going to keep recruiting. And then there's other guys, Braden Platt, the Washington four-star will be on campus here soon. Uh, Viliamu Asa, the kid out of St. John Bosco, was is supposed to be on campus this week or next week, sometime in the near future. Top 100 guy. He's got everybody after him, though. So, um, yeah, Dylan Williams. We're sorry, Sam, real quick. Dylan Williams out of Long Beach Poly, another one who's already scheduled an official visit to Michigan, uh, is another guy to keep an eye out. So there's some, there's some options there. But the two guys they feel best about, for sure, are Childs and Beasley. So interesting thing with Daniel Hill, you mentioned Jeremy Lesueur. He doesn't. He's actually the plug. The <laughs> plug awesome. Awesome. That's hilarious. So, yeah. I've posted that tidbit on our board every time they offer a kid from Mississippi. Matter of fact, I don't even post it because somebody else will come in and just say, you know, all right, Steve, before you even say it, we know Jerry Millisour is the only player in program history out of out of or you know, scholarship player out of out of Mississippi. So that's well, funny. Hey, He's you the know, plug. If that's the case, you might as well use it, right? No, that it's guy. it's it's you <laughs> yeah, know, that guy. It's, <laughs> Be what do the people find that guy? <laughs> yeah. might be to help you. So he is definitely the plug on Daniel Hill. Uh, back to Jeremiah Beasley. You know, interesting thing to me is how the ebbs and flows of his recruitment. Early on, there was a lot of Michigan State talk. 
that that morphed a bit into a lot of Penn State talk. Uh, he admitted as much, you know, and Penn State offered him. That kind of swung the pendulum a bit their way. Then we started hearing a whole lot of Tennessee, right? Uh, you know, his mom's – one of his mom's alma mater. You know, you got some really strong recruiters there uh, as well. Brian Jean-Marie, the, the LB coach. And then, uh, of course, uh, you know, when you, you talk about, you know, one of the top re- Detroit area recruiters, Tim Banks is definitely a name that resonates. But now – you know, as of late, Tennessee has kind of trended down some. Sounds like, you know, the, the linebacker numbers uh, for them are, is a bit of a deterrent. And Michigan State is, is kind of popping back to the fore. And I don't think his brother Malik Carr is really pushing that hard. But I think it's, just, you know, it's close. It's uh, it's familiar. Uh, depth chart is, is favorable. But the reason why I bring that up is you see all of these changes. So from, you know, from, like I said, Michigan State to Penn State to Tennessee, back to Michigan State, one thing that has been a constant for the past couple of months is Michigan trending up. Like, I think I agree with you, Steve. I think Michigan is the team to beat right now. I'm not ready to – I'm not quite to your level of putting in a crystal ball, uh, but I do think that they've nudged into the lead there and that they've been the team that's been trending up the most consistent – consistently of late would be very encouraging to me if I were Michigan too. And the fact that he has a timeline of just a couple of more months, uh, and he's making a habit to getting down to campus uh, as well. Jacob Odin is one of his longtime buddies. Now he is definitely recruiting them hard. And Chris Partridge is an outstanding recruiter. A lot of reasons to think Bryce that this one is going to continue to trend up for, from Michigan, but it's looking like it's kind of shifted back over into a Michigan, Michigan state battle. I, I mean, personally, I think it's incredible. The job Chris Bartridge has done. I mean, I don't know how hard George Hilo at the time was really recruiting Jeremiah, but for him to come in, get three trips. And now you're talking and Steve already put in a crystal ball for Michigan to now potentially be this place he goes that just shows the type of recruiter he is. And I, I personally have always been a huge fan of Jeremiah because, I mean, this guy is uber talented. I mean, when I first saw him, Sam, he was playing running back. He wasn't even playing linebacker. Hey, man. So who was, the, who was the Belleville linebacker that was committed to Michigan a couple of years ago? Aaron Alexander. Man, I went to see – so I went to one of their games, and uh, I guess Jeremiah would have been, what, a freshman at the time? Yeah, I think a freshman. And you, if you go – if you had been at that game, you would, have thought, you would have thought Jeremiah Beasley was the guy committed to Michigan because he was all over the field. And and you talk about being able to hit was just blowing guys up, blowing guys up. I, I mean, I, I feel the need to shout out Clink here. And if you're if you're Steve Clink scale, you got to feel like, man, I finally got some wingmen. Right. Yeah. You know I mean, it's like I finally got some good wingmen because think about I, I shouldn't say it that way. I. I that's the wrong way to say it. <laughs> That's the wrong. Way. You you feel like you got some guys that can really pick up on your leads. Because Bryce Underwood, I mean, he had to scratch and claw to get Bryce Underwood to campus, and then he handed him over to Kirk and Kirk. He set him up. He put it on the tee, and Kirk hit it out of the box. Out of the box. And the same thing with Jeremiah Beasley. I mean, Michigan was not. But for the relationship with Plink that goes back years with the family, who knows how much of a presence Michigan winds up being in this recruitment. Kept them warm enough to when you hand them off to Chris Partridge, boom, now he's hitting it out of the park. It, it, it's a great sort of closing kind of uh, uh, discussion, if you will, about the strength of this recruiting staff, fellas. We kind of mentioned this before. But the more, the deeper we get into this cycle, Steve, the more it just feels like this is Jim Harbaugh's strongest recruiting staff of his tenure. Yeah, I think from top to bottom, it's hard to argue against, right? That's especially after bringing Partridge back, which, uh, and that's not even a knock on on George Hilo at all. Right, I mean, we're, right. with Partridge, we're talking about the guy that's won 
recruiter, 24 seven recruiter of the year. Did he win it twice? I mean, he yeah, won it once. For- by the way, by the way, real quick, because I, I want to make it clear. George Hilo. So it's, it's not like George Hilo and Matt Weiss were the same as recruiting. George, not even. Yeah. Not even yeah. Close. George Hilo was recruiting, man. George Hilo had my man from down in in Florida. That yeah, was- Raylan Wilson committed. Yeah, Raylan Wilson committed. Oh, he was he was on Aaron uh, Aaron Childs real hard and almost had him in the boat. Had him ready to commit as well. So it's not like Hilo. No, nah, it's not the same. Not, the not same. even, no. not even in the same. Yeah, not even the same line right. there. No, but, <laughs> point that out real quick. no, no, it's worth that's worth mentioning because yeah, people might try to couple that together. No, there's major levels to the difference in that situation. So, uh, you know, but again, it speaks as much to like how great of a recruiter Partridge has proven to be over the years as anything. But yeah, we talk about. I think, like I said, I think one of the biggest things to remember with this staff is I think there are more guys now than there ever have been under Harbaugh where Michigan can throw a guy out of region, out of position, and and still not only keep things going in the direction, but maybe even improve their standing. Because we've seen over the years how important a, a guy, a, a, an assistant who might not even ever coach the kid and may not even ever uh, recruit their region can be. You know, as like we talked about, Sharon Moore had some success in California – Back in the day, I know with uh, I know he didn't pan out at Michigan, but Darian Green Warren right. was a highly recruited kid that Michigan that you know why is the offensive line coach or tight ends coach out in California recruiting a, a top one fifty cornerback right? And not only did he recruit him, but he helped he helped win that race, you know. So we've seen it time and time again. Jay Harbaugh's been thrown into recruitments like that. Chris Partridge, obviously, in his first tenure at Michigan. So yeah, I mean, it just feels like a a much more dynamic and well-rounded recruiting staff uh, across the board. And, yeah, that's not even mentioning Kirk Campbell, which we've, uh, you know, done a lot. Like I said, just, uh, uh, you know, having Cutter Bowley, George McIntyre, and Bryce Underwood on campus within three weeks is more than we'd seen in, like, three years. Uh, dude, um, he's recruiting the, the, the Smeagol kid in 26. Yep, 26. Yep. Uh, Jonas Williams, too, the kid out of Bolingbrook, is, is probably going to be a pretty big prospect. And he's already been up to Michigan, I think, twice, so – uh, yeah, no, re- quarterback recruiting, talk about a thing that's in a better spot than it's ever been as far as just the potential options. Uh, you know, that, that's, it's, uh, it's almost weird. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's like, wait, there's like four, five guys that are possible in this cycle, you know? So, yeah, no, you can't say enough about, uh, you know, just, just the, the – really the staff is, is now a combination of on-field coaching and recruiting-wise. It just it, – it feels like Michigan's best staff recruiting – and possibly also on the field as well. Well, folks, I think you'll wind up seeing that in this recruiting class. Uh, I wouldn't be – I expect that there will be some more fireworks in the month of April. I expect there to be fireworks in May. This is going to be a good recruiting spring for Michigan, getting them ready for a summer and when the official visits pick up in June, where I think things have a chance of really sort of continuing on an explosive kind of – kind of recruiting um, outcome uh, circumstance uh, into into the summer. So be sure to keep it locked over on the MichiganInsider.com. Again, $1 gets you in your first month. Football, basketball, and recruiting. When you become a full-paying member after you get through the trial period, you also get access to Paramount+. Plus. So great bang for your buck. Of course, if you're listening to us on the podcast, be sure to like the podcast, be sure to rate it, be sure to review it, and tell all your friends about it. If you're watching us on YouTube, you know what to do. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. You keep helping us grow. Until that next episode, though, thanks for watching another edition of the Michigan Recruiting Insider.